Hey peeps, Sarah here from Sparrow Springs, and today I want to share with you um, kind of a fun little thing. I just bought a new set of colored pencils, so I want to do a comparison of the Faber-Castell Polychromos against the Prismacolor Premieres. And um, so I've been working with the Prismacolors for probably about 10 years or so, and I love them, but they definitely have some downsides, which I'll get into later. So um, I've been hearing a ton about um, the Faber-Castell Polychromos, so I bought kind of an introduction set of just 24, and so I want to directly compare these two brands because I would say that amongst most colored pencil artists, those are the two main brands that I see the most often. Now, just for a little bit of a twist, I did throw in a third brand just so um, my artsy people, you know, you'll, you'll, most of you will probably have heard of both of the brands, Faber-Castell and Prismacolor, but if you're not an artsy person, I threw in some Crayolas just to compare so you understand the difference between, um, more of the kind of student kid grade stuff versus what uh, professional artists use and why. And so I'm going to be rating the opacity, the layering, how it blends, the color selection for the, uh, the size of uh, pack that I got, um, how the white works, which is really important, and I will share with, the, with you why on that one. And then the last one is durability. So let's jump into it a little bit. Okay, so I have my three sets here, and um, something to note, um, the first thing is that each of these, um, the kind of higher quality ones come in their own fancy tins, which I absolutely love because it kind of protects the colored pencils a little bit. So the personal color just comes in a two layered, um, thing, whatever for the, the 36 count. And then I only got a 24 count of the Faber-Castell. Now, obviously with the Crayolas, it's just a box and storing them is not the most convenient. So it's just kind of jumbled up and I'm weird OCD and I like to, you know, separate all my colors. So uh, this one does tend to annoy me a little bit. <laughs> so those are the actual sets of pencils. My husband did something to my child. So something that I did ahead of time is I actually went through and I did swatches of all of the colored pencils. So I did my polychromos, my prismacolor, and then because I have a lack of foresight, I did the Crayola on the back side. So it's a little harder to compare them side by side. But what I will do is I will just give you snapshot pictures up here to compare a little bit as I talk. So the, um, the first thing I want to talk about is the opacity. So basically opacity is just kind of like how, how solid are the colors. So, um, I used a tonal gray paper because this will give me a really good idea of not, not only my darker colors, but how my lighter colors show up as well. So the very obvious first thing that I notice amongst the three, um, the three brands is that the Prisma color definitely pops the most. So as far as opacity goes, Prisma color definitely takes the cake on this one. Now between the Polychromos and the Crayola, um, the, <laughs> I was actually fairly surprised just how solid some of the Crayolas did get. However, when it comes to the lighter, the lighter values and whatnot, it didn't, it just didn't pop nearly as much, um, as the Polychromos. So, um, so Prismacolor came in first here, then Polychromos and Crayola. Um, next I want to talk about the layering. So the layering, um, what I did for this test is I just took about four or five different colors and just tried to get a really nice blend of a color that I didn't already have in the set. So I've got my Polychromos and my Prismacolors. They did fairly well. Um, for this one, I would actually say that the Polychromos did a little better. Um, I felt like I was able to um, get more detail 
in the scheme of like just laying down those colors. So one of the things about Prismacolor that is really that is really hard is that it is a softer lead pencil and I know I know some of that has to do with one of them being more waxy based and the other one being more kind of like oil based. Um, to be honest, I can't remember off the top of my head which is which, but I, I do believe that the Prismacolor is the wax, the wax based ones. Um, but because it is a bit of a softer lead type, it's harder to keep a sharper point. So the texturing becomes a bit more modeled when you get um, kind of lighter. So like when I'm pressing harder, it works really nicely, but like if I wanted to just lay down some very, very light layers, the the texture spacing is very wide, um, farther apart sort of thing because it would just dull so fast. So that was something that I really liked about the Polychromos is that the, the texturing was just much tighter um, in the lighter values. So um, as far as layering, um, I would say that Polychromos came in first, Prismacolor in second, but then <laughs> Uh, the Crayola was kind of just a joke. <laughs> it was hard to actually get it to layer properly and you could very much see where one color started and one color stopped. So layering was not, not Crayola's wheelhouse at all. Um, next we kind of get into the blending part of it. Now, uh, like I said be before with the Prismacolor, is that it was a softer based kind of lead and while that had some downfalls the upside of it is you get this really nice creamy texture that translates to a very smooth blend so Prismacolor does really really well when it comes to actual blending so the my blending test I did kind of a darker um, a darker blue um, transitioning to a lighter yellow and you can just see that super smooth transition when I really blend those in. Now Polychromos didn't actually do too bad as far as that goes just because um, it, it, still, it still blends very well but I would say that just because it is a harder lead it doesn't quite do the same. However, I did notice that Prismacolor did blend well when it went from kind of the darker to the mid-tones, but Polychromos actually did really well from the mid to the light tones. And Crayola was a little bit of a disaster, so I tried to do a comparable, comparable color um, as far as from a darker blue to a lighter yellow, but the yellow isn't very opaque. And then with the, the layering and whatnot, it's just like, it didn't matter how light I pressed um, the pencil. It's just, you can see exactly where that color ended. I even tried going in with a lighter tone, like maybe it'll blend a little easier if it's a lighter, um, a lighter value. Um, but even then it just, it didn't quite, didn't quite do it for me. Prismacolor definitely came on top there, then Polychromos, and then Crayola. Now, color selection. Um, color selection. This is this is a little interesting, just because like I, I have to kind of take in take into consideration the size of the packs because the Crayola and the Polychromos are both a 24 pack, and then the Prismacolor was a 36. However, the shocking part of this is that I actually thought that Prismacolors like as far as the utility of their colors wasn't as well rounded as the polychromos or even the Crayola. Um, I always found myself being really frustrated not having like an actual gray. I always had to kind of blend my own gray. Um, now obviously if you get the larger sets this isn't really a big deal but like as someone who's trying to start working with a nicer set of colored pencils on a budget um, it was really frustrating to get a 36 pack and not have like some more of those kind of earth tone colors and just like the, the browns were very, they're very rich in color, but they weren't exactly like, I, I wanted more of like the grayer natural tones and I just wasn't getting that with the Prismacolor. And part of that might be just because of how bright the colors are and, 
um, just always having to mix several colors, um, it was just more time consuming. So when I got the 24 pack of Polychromos and it came with a warm gray and a cool gray, and then the browns I felt like were really, uh, like they were still rich in tone, but they felt more like, um, more like warmer, warmer browns and cooler browns and just kind of more of what I would see in more of a natural landscape. And even, even some of the greens that they had were very, um, utility. The Prismacolor almost kind of reminded me more of like kind of a fantasy kind of palette. So if that's kind of what you're going for, then that's great. Um, Crayola actually really surprised me with their color selection. Um, no, that was something else about the, the Prismacolor is that they actually did have a pretty nice set of colors as far as to make skin tones go quickly. So that was something that I did think that Prismacolor did focus on. Um, but I still thought the Polychromos had some nice things for skin tones. But as far as Crayola goes, I actually thought they had a pretty wide spectrum of colors. Um, considering there was only 24. So for this, for this particular section, um, I would say that the Polychromos came out on top as far as utility, uh, for me personally anyways, and then Crayola and then Prismacolor. <laughs> okay, so then the next thing that I'm focusing on is the white. So white is a super important color when you're looking at a set of pencils because your white is something where you can work on the highlights or you can also use it for burnishing. So burnishing is basically just when you go over the top of these colors and like it's supposed to be, it's supposed to act kind of like a blender as well as like just bringing, um, bringing all that blending color together and adding more highlights. Um, I'm probably screwing up the definition of burnishing altogether, but basically just being able to take that white and, um, give it, give it a layer of lighting over top of it. So as far as this, this kind of goes with the opacity a little bit. So like Prismacolor definitely came out on top. So I actually did a, a test with the Polychromos using the Prismacolor white with the Polychromos and it still worked fairly well. Um, the Polychromos white, even though it was fairly opaque, the, the blending with it was kind of disappointing. So I was, I was bummed about that, but obviously Crayola was, uh, again, kind of, uh, eh, want, want. <laughs> so Crayola came out on bottom. So Prismacolor, Polychromos, Crayola on that one. Now, the last one, the last factor that I went with was durability. So, um, <laughs> One of the things that Prismacolor is absolutely notorious for is their breakage. The breakage of the lead is insane. So anytime that I would like drop any of these, um, the lead just breaks off. And so you, you lose all of this like product that you could be using. That's part of the reason why some of my pencils are so short, not because I've necessarily used them that much, but because it would, like the lead would break and then I would have to resharpen it. And if you didn't, you had to be like careful when you were sharpening it. So even when I'm using Prismacolors, you know, it they don't work as well in the lighter values, but every time I would press down to get that um, to really kind of mix everything together, to blend everything, I can feel the pencil bowing, um, in my hand. <laughs> so, like, in that respect, Prismacolor definitely comes out on the bottom as far as durability. But, again, the reason why is because they have that really soft texture and everything and just the, um, the blendability for all of that. But I do feel like maybe they could have used a slightly harder wood for these. When I tested out the Polychromos for the very first time, that was the very first thing that I noticed was just how sturdy they were. And I felt like I could sharpen them to a really fine point without worrying about something breaking. And just like being able to really get in there and use them and blend them, um, without worrying about whether or not the pencil's gonna break. <laughs> um, so the Crayola did a little bit better as far as the Prismacolor goes, as far as durability, but I can still feel kind of a bending happening. Um, I can just feel 
yeah, I can feel the bending happening as I put some pressure on the Crayolas. So for this one, Polychromos came out on top by far and Prismacolor, sorry. <sighs> I love Prismacolor. I really do. So as far as all of these factors all together, Polychromos came out on top. However, Prismacolor still has their merits. So something that I'm actually really excited to be able to do is to use both of the brands together. So maybe use the, the Polychromos for more of like the detailing and just the heavy body work, but come in with the Prismacolors over top with just that pop of color. Um, I, I think there's a lot of um, advantage to using using both pencils in their strengths. So as an example, this is a drawing that I did uh, just with the Prismacolors and because of that soft lead and having a hard time keeping the point sharp, um, honestly after a while I just got lazy and I didn't want to have to keep sharpening my pencil all the time so like the, the tip wears down and I don't get the level of detail that I want well, this one, most of it was done with the polychromos, and I could really just get in there and really work the details and stuff. Now, disclaimer, I did actually go over top of a couple places with some of the Prismacolors just because I love, I love what they do as far as just that little bit of highlight, the pop of color. So I love being able to use both of them for their own strengths. So that's kind of my conclusion with all of that. Now, if you are a person who primarily uses cheap art supplies, you know, it's not to say that you can't get some amazing work out of Crayola colored pencils, but you might have to work a little bit harder at it and be more precise with what you're doing because um, colors will muddy really fast. Um, but it's, it's really more up to your skill level and um, your level of patience <laughs> because it's going to take you longer to get uh to get the the same result that you would using a slightly higher higher quality colored pencil now i know that i didn't actually do a drawing with the crayolas to give you a comparison now if you would like to see that please leave a comment down below and let me know if you want to see me try some form of a detailed drawing with crayola We'll see how that goes. <laughs> okay, Paige, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're new here. Hit that like button if you like this video. And, and I apologize. It has been a while since I posted a video. I have been super, super busy. I just finished my collection. I have all 50 pieces. Actually, when I counted it, I had like 56. So, overachiever. So, I have been overhauling on the computer trying to get everything edited and get my products up on my website. So um, check out the link in the description if you want to know when that comes out. Okay, that's all for now, peeps. I'll see you later.